when the Ahmad Arbery case happened down in Brunswick, Georgia, a lot of things happened. But one thing that did happen unexpectedly was the descent of hundreds of people bearing arms. One of those people was Grandmaster Jay of the NFAC. We have Grandmaster Jay with us today, and we're going to talk about the case. We're going to talk about the hip hop connection. We're going to talk about next steps and where we are right now. Thank you, Grandmaster Jay. How are you? Chuck, it is always a blessing to hear from you, my brother. I wish we were talking under <laughs> happier musically related circumstances, right. but <laughs> the season that we're in, um, like I said, I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to have this time to spend with you and your viewers so we can keep people informed that they're not victims to the manipulated narrative of mainstream media. Absolutely. Well, before we you know, get into that, because that is definitely on the menu, the manipulation of mainstream media, because um, we've seen already how they're maligning his uh, character in death, even, even though right. he's clearly the victim, clearly. Right. Right. Um, but in the pre-chat, we talked about hip hop and a connection to hip hop. And I want people to understand what is the connection to hip hop? Well, first you have to understand, and this is for all of the, the OGs out there who know how hip hop actually got started. It's been lost ever since hip hop has become a billion dollar business. But the end of the story was the hip hop actually grew out of the gang wars in New York. And a lot of folks act like gang wars just started in California. No, there was a serious gang problem in New York. Uh, you had groups like the Black Spades and another other folks I won't call out. And it was folks like Bambada and Herc and all of them that came up with the idea that maybe instead of everybody shooting and killing each other, we could settle our differences artistically, you know, rapping, DJ and so forth. Hip hop then became the voice of the streets. If you remember Melly Mel and the message, which was the first uh -huh. graphic, hard hitting, gritty song that we showed hip hop was a a, a, a snapshot into our world that you weren't hearing on you know on the white radio stations right. since then you had nothing but a string of rappers mcs call them what you want some that say i'm just going to tell you about where i come from tell you what i've been through but if there's one thing that hip-hop has never ever gotten away from and this is the time that it needs to stand up is hip-hop has always been the voice of the conscience of the people I'll give you an example. Back in the 60s when the civil rights movement was going on, artists shifted what they were singing about to start making songs like uh, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, um, you know, the, the songs reflected the times. Uh, mm -hmm. Public Enemy did that when they did Fight the Power. You know, there's always a song that speaks to the mode that we're in. And right now, that's what the people are looking at hip hop. They're looking at hip hop like we know hip hop about to come back strong on this because this sense of unity, this sense of retaliation, this sense of indignation that we feel behind just not just the Ahmad case, but the right. Breonna Taylor case and a few other cases that are out there. And all of the people we've lost in the last five or six years, you know, all the, from your Tavon, all the way up to your Mike Browns, all the way, everybody, Laquan McDonald. Today's Mike I, Brown's birthday, by the way. Exactly, which is mm -hmm. ironic enough. And yesterday was Malcolm X's birthday. So, uh -huh. you know, you got all these historical dates that are relevant to us, but are being passed over, not even so much as mentioned by the, the powers to be, so to speak. So hip hop, the, the bearing is that it reflects the attitude of the people. And just like a uh, big shout out to Buckshot, uh, who went in and did a small thing that he did based on what we did in Brunswick. And he put it out. He was expressing how he felt. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Uh, to my man, um, my man, Young Jip, from, who actually signed um, uh, Easy e reached out to me from Compton and said, what y'all just did, you know, we rock with that. You know, that's the most, see, the attitude should begin to reflect in the music because hip-hop is the spokesperson of the streets. So mm -hmm. that's the relationship. This wasn't just about a bunch of citizens who got together and went down there. This was brothers that are already on the street. Yeah. Who already okay. know how hard it is to be on these mm -hmm. streets. Who right. are the victims of these streets saying enough is enough. Uh -huh. Now if y'all look, we don't we don't march, we don't sing, we don't hail hands, we don't sit at little round tables, we don't have people make donations. But the one thing we haven't done that y'all forgot that we can still do is what Malcolm X said. We can be courteous and respectful, but you put your hands on us, we're gonna send you to the morgue or to the hospital. This is called self-defense. This is not raising up. We didn't do anything outside of the law and we're not doing anything outside of the law unless you push us to do something right. outside of the law. The difference 
difference is we don't holler no justice, no peace. That's for y'all. We're not waving signs and singing and singing songs. That's for y'all. That's cool. We're the other group. That's what NFAC came from. When y'all don't want to listen to them, when y'all don't want to listen to our scholars, when y'all don't want to listen to our journalists, when y'all don't want to listen to the messages, when y'all just want to keep treating us like we're less than a human being, then we're going to have to strike back and show you that not only are we human beings, but we're very intelligent, very well financed, and very well armed, and we understand the law. Mm, okay. Very important note. What, and, what, we're what? And, we're, and we're hip-hop. And we're hip-hop. Let me go put that on there. And we're hip-hop. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Still now, hip hop is, uh, you know, these things are not new. Like you noted, this is, uh, this has been going on for a long time. I mean, since we got here, but recently, more recently, and and it seems like it's gotten worse recently with uh, the the pandemic. To be honest with you, New York is off the chain right now. Uh, right. The cops, that is. Right now. Hip hop's been quiet. I, I mean, yes. Uh, Chuck, uh, don't, Buckshot, don't hold back. Hold on, bro. Buckshot, don't hold, don't hold back. Young Buck spoke on it. Don't hold but, back, my brother. Uh -uh, stop. Yeah, I'm gonna stop. Well, I'm going to uh, stop you right there. Nope. See, what ahead. I wasn't going to do, but since mm -hmm. you opened the door, I'm going to run through it. <laughs> I'm going to call, I, and I'm calling them out. Like I yeah. said, yeah, hip hop is quiet right now when they should be the most vocal. OK, uh -huh. all you rappers that went out here and painted all these negative images of how you bust your guns and how you uh -huh. stacking loot and you chasing the bag and you got the big grills. See, all of y'all got called out when this happened, not right. only as far as you physically showing up to do something, but for you to even speak on it. OK, I don't talk. About, I don't mean writing a letter to the governor. I, OK, that's what they do. I don't mean you want to contribute some money to somebody who's already trying to do something. That's not that's what they do. Hip hop has been conspicuously quiet mm -hmm. during the season that we're going through. And some of the biggest folks and I, I salute to my man, Chief Rocker Busy B, who said this the other day. He said, if you are one of these mega stars like a Jay-Z or a Diddy, he says you came from hip hop, but mm -hmm. you are no longer hip hop. You are a successful artists and we acknowledge uh -huh. that you you belong to somebody you are signed to somebody you have puppet masters you can't just uh -huh. flip out like we can so you get you're, you're guarded we understand that but right. that's not hip-hop hip-hop is the culture hip-hop yeah. is all the djs breakers graffiti writers um and, and b-boys and b-girls that feel some kind of way y'all quiet yeah. which takes us to a deeper issue you will attack your own you'll attack me for even saying what i'm saying right now but you didn't show up to attack them boys in brunswick Right. You will you will you will you will say I'm gonna see you somewhere, but I ain't see you out there with them on the streets with them boys from Brunswick. I didn't see you knocking on doors like you claim to do in your music like we did. I didn't see you roll up with your heat like we did. I didn't see none of that. Right. And now what has happened is the people have responded. When the, when the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said he wanted 10,000 soldiers when he was doing the a justice or else, and he didn't get those, a lot of it was because most folks were not consciously awake or did not care, or they had their own personal vendettas. But what has happened now in the in the wake of the of the Aubrey case is that I've got over 12,000 registered gun owners in one week mm. that are ready to go out and do just what we did, and some of them want to go a lot further. So mm. it is it is incumbent upon hip hop. To step up because a lot of the brain conditioning that these folks suffer from, a lot of the apathy that they suffer from, a lot of this we have arrived that they suffer from comes from the music and the images that you put out. And I just and then I say right now, I'm not knocking hip hop. I'm saying I don't hear you. Yeah, that's all. And I need to hear from you. That's all. right. Right. How do you uh, this is I don't know. How do you manage such a large number of people? Uh, 12,000 is nothing to sneeze at. And then you mentioned some may want to go further. How do you manage that? Do you continually uh, speak to the, the membership to keep them from doing something outside of the law? Chuck, um, you have to remember that I'm ex-military. Uh -huh. So there's one thing that I'm very, very experienced that is controlling large numbers of people through command and control, not myself specifically, but through the delegation 
of authority to certain individuals within the structure. And if you join this organization, as most of us are ex-military, we understand discipline. We understand command and structure. We also understand that if you demonstrate to us that you're not capable of following orders or maintaining the position that we have, then you will never find yourself in a situation where you can do something stupid that would jeopardize the entire operation. Um, yeah. For the most part, there are folks on the ground in every city that I've talked to who already have control of their people who already have structure in place. That's why it's a coalition. Mm -hmm. However, anyone that wants to be on the front lines with us, as we were, you must believe that they've been heavily vetted on the legal side and as far as the criminal side and so forth. We're not gonna put a loose cannon out there. Those folks that want to go further than any line that we've drawn, you're not acting under the auspices of the NFAC. You're doing your own thing and more power to you. I'm not gonna tell you not to do that, but there are some coordinated moves that we are making that do require that everyone is on the same sheet of music that everyone is on the same page okay and 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 that's how you could you keep command and control i have folks that are that that they don't have to come to me i've empowered them to make decisions and they have folks under them that they've empowered to make decisions and everyone knows their lane and then of course as you can imagine uh, i don't believe in chapters because chapters are like books they come to an end we believe in branches your branch of the tree okay and because of that certain branches serve different purposes uh, a lot of folks think we just threw this thing together no we just been waiting to show our face that's mm -hmm. all okay constitutionally we can have a black militia Okay, but constitutionally also we can we can operate under some of the same laws that some of these other militias operate under. But the difference is just like the Panthers, we've got a community program built in. Just like the Panthers, we've got an outreach and a training program built in. As a matter of fact, we started this weekend with with working with folks to restore their gun rights or to find out if their gun rights were even suspended to start with. There were so many people operating under false information that now they can go get a gun and they can stand out there with us. And then of course, there are other folks who know for a fact that they could never own a gun again because the judicial system is set up in such a way that they penalize you by suspending some of your constitutional rights and say it's because you got in an argument with your girlfriend five years ago. Those right. folks still can serve a purpose and we're, we're carving out jobs for them too. There's a lot of people that want to help. I'll tell you where, why hip hop is important because they're waiting for somebody to tell them to do it. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what they're waiting on. Right. So, so that, right. that's, that's so, so the control is, the control is actually through the command structure itself uh, and realizing that uh, I am not a dictator. Uh, I am a side-by-side -side fighter with them, uh, but because I put the coalition together, I have final say-so because I'm financing this operation. Now, let me clear that up. There's a lot of folks that are calling saying, how can I donate money? How can I donate money? We don't want your money. Okay. We, we're not in this for the money. We didn't set up a website and say, go sign a petition and drop a couple of dollars off. We're not trying to eat off of what has happened. What we're okay. trying to do is show people that the time has arrived for you to change your approach to these incidents. Stop showing up peacefully. If they want to continue to exact violence against us, you're going to have to get violent, okay? Yeah. But just have to be violent smartly. I'm not encouraging anything. I'm telling you that it is intelligent to defend yourself, especially when you're being attacked, simply because of the color of your skin. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Uh, so you, so did, that, that's it. Go ahead. Sorry. Did you see Charlemagne's comments? He was on a mainstream outlet and he advocated for uh, gun ownership in self-defense. I, I saw that. I saw the clip. Uh, this is a matter of fact, I saw the clip before we went down to, to Brunswick. Uh, and I thought that, you know, it was very admirable of him to say that uh, he did encourage folks to learn, you know, what the appropriate procedure is for your state because every state is different. In some states, there is no getting a gun. I'm sorry, there's just no way around it. Uh, but I, 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 I championed what he said and I supported it. However, however, without anyone wanting to say it, telling folks to go out and get trained on weapons, but not telling them how to organize mm -hmm. so that they legally, can legally assemble with those weapons mm -hmm. is, is detrimental to the entire cause. Here's why. The police are organized. The police are organized in groups. The police are organized in organization and chapters. When they come out, they come out organized. They come out with laws that say they can come together in that fashion. And then they have laws that says, if you don't like it, we can do something to you. As long as there's no counter to that, 
that they can bend the laws whichever way they want. But just like Malcolm said, an armed, organized black militia should be present in every black neighborhood. Even if they think they've gentrified us. When your people show up, our people show up. If 10 of your people show up, 20 of our people show up. We will always outnumber you and we will always outgun you to make sure you do the right thing. Right. If you're pr protecting us and serving us, we just observe it. If you're not protecting us and you're not serving us, we're going to attack you. I'm going to say this openly. We are going to attack you we're going, because, you're, because you're breaking the law as far as we're concerned. Yeah. Once yeah. people start to get over this, 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 this fear that they have, well, I don't want to go to jail. Really, you're on your way there, whether you know it or not. You're going to end up in a cage one way or the other if they keep stripping away all of our freedoms. If you don't stand for the constitutional rights that, you, that are yours, then you don't deserve them. Thomas Jefferson yeah. said that. Here's the other part. A lot of folks are saying, well, it's easy for you to say that. No, it is not. None of this is easy. Putting your life on the line is not easy. Facing off with the Gwynn County Sheriff's Department and the Georgia State Patrol was not easy. Face to face with the KKK down in, in Brunswick was not easy. However, they got the message. And now they're falling over themselves, turning each other in because they know that the counter is there are really some black folks out here that will come down here and do to you just what y'all did to him. Mm -hmm. So as long as we have that credible threat on the table, that's a deterrent to yeah. other folks from attempting to get away with things like what they've, they've done with, with, with this young man. And I'm pretty sure you've heard this by now, what they did with Breonna Taylor and Kenny Parker. Now, they had to release Kenny yesterday, send him home. They're going to drop the charges. He never should have been charged to start with. They were wrong. Just admit you screwed up. Pay the girl's family handsomely. Give a public apology and leave this man alone. Yeah. But policing has become this, 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 this corrupted gang now that thinks they can just do stuff and get away with it and there'll be no repercussions. Our job is to bring those repercussions or the threat of to get us to a place where you're going to respect us. That's all. Mm -hmm. You're going to respect okay. us. That's it. What's the biggest misconception about your organization? Uh, the biggest misconception is that we are a... Um, um, we are a rebirth of the Black Panthers yeah. um, and that we are on a, a cop killing crusade and we are, this is the biggest misperception, Blacks with guns, going to be in the streets, going to be crazy. Um, uh, 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 what's the purpose? You know, total misconceptions. And let me go ahead and unpack each one of those. First of all, there are white militias in this country that show up like they did in Michigan, and no one says these things about them. They even threaten the law enforcement. No one said anything about that, okay? As soon as a black militia shows up, which we're not breaking any laws, we're constitutionally enabled to be created, and we're actually operating to, for the safety of our own people, they have a problem with that because America is still afraid of legally armed black people because America has a guilt conscience about what they did to black people. Let's just go ahead and get that out, okay? Yeah. So that's the first thing. The biggest mis other big misperception is that the Black Panthers. No, we're not the Black Panthers. We're not the new Black Panthers. We are not patterned after the Black Panthers. The Black Panthers are a separate group. The new Black Panthers are a separate group. NFAC is a separate group. So therefore, even though we may have adopted the 10-point program that the Panthers had for the things they want for the community, those are things we still want today. They're not asking for anything specific, but as far as thinking that we are some... Uh, the Southern uh, Poverty Law Center is already considering, or are they a hate group? Really? Are you really the ones to try to hold a candle to some people because we stood up? The truth of the matter is we're not out to kill police because police didn't kill Aubrey. Okay? Right. It was yeah. it was two yeah. white citizens. I don't care what job they had. Two right. white citizens, I'm sorry, three white citizens killed a black citizen. That ain't right. got jack to do with the police. Now, the fact that it was an ex-police speaks to a bigger problem, that you still have the connections and make a phone call to get you out of some stuff when you know you have broken the law and murdered this person and violated their constitutional rights. So this is not even about us coming after the police. We didn't come after the police. We came to Brunswick and knocked on the door of the citizen because we wanted to have a word with the citizen. And we went to the guy who videotaped it. We went to his house so that we could have a word with him as a citizen. We did not come as a militia. We came as citizens. So this is not about us killing the police. Now, the police, on the other hand, are off the chain, as you said. 
The police act like they got an order to just go out and just do whatever they want to black people. Well, good. Y'all came along at the right time because even though you're not our primary focus, you can quickly become that if you don't cease what you are doing to these people because it's not us that are coming mm -hmm. after you. It's the people that are calling us to come after you. Yeah. When the people start to call the police on the police, you know we got a problem in this country. Are people asking you to take out folk like uh, everybody wants Zimmerman dead. Let's let's put it out there. Uh, I, I, obviously, that's not something we're going to entertain. But <laughs> I, I just want to know: Are people asking? You know, uh, I'm going to answer that question like this, Chuck. Um, and if I was sitting in front of the Congress, I'd lean over and talk to my lawyer first, <laughs> and then say some words to you. I, I can neither confirm nor will I deny that we've received any credible threats against any individual who has been involved in a high profile shooting. Uh, though it is far for me to not echo some of those sentiments myself, I don't believe that you can go out and clean up the streets with a gun, even though sometimes that's what you need. Yeah. That's the best way for me to answer that question. It's so funny to me, uh, you know, when you mention vigilantism, it's always glamorized in the movies. You know, I was going through my old movies. I saw Charles Bronson. There's the Equalizer. <laughs> there's Dirty Harry. My favorite, right. My favorite, yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the Punisher in the comic books. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it goes on and on. All of them are, are white. White guys. And right. um, white men, by the way. They're white men. They're white men. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's really, it's really <laughs> romanticized to the point where we like, we rooting for the, uh, you it, know, it, and here's the catch. Bernard Getz, by the way. It ain't no man. fun when the rabbit got the gun. <laughs> and see, that's the problem. All those stories are told from the perspective of the Anglo-Saxon white man avenging yeah. something with a gun. Right. Right? But if bros do that, if bros go out and we decide to avenge a wrong with a gun, then we're painted as thugs and low life and criminals. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure if you saw the article that they wrote up about us in The Root. And I have to salute the root because he started off giving you the standard spiel. Armed citizens showed up and, and then, then he said, what? He said, no, I'm not going to do that. He says, I'm not going to act like <laughs> I'm not going to give you all the standard. We are equal spiel. No, he said what really happened was <laughs> and he brought, right, some right. brothers got, got sick of the bullshit and right. rolled up on these cats. And yeah. then while they listen, what, even though they wanted to paint them as neo thugs, these same neo thugs helped release balloons in memory of this mm -hmm. guy. And while they were viciously releasing these balloons at the yeah. same time, they peacefully went over to the, to the neighborhood. And but, so, so the point I'm making is America. America romanticizes their own terrorism mm -hmm. against other people. But when those yeah. people fight back, right. when those people stand up for themselves, when those people arm themselves just as equally as them, all of a sudden it's not romantic anymore. Yeah. All of a sudden it's terrifying. You know why? Yeah. Because like I said, it ain't no fun when a rabbit got the gun. Facts. Have you uh, heard from the family or anyone affiliated with Ahmad Arbery or anyone? We were we were with the mother and both okay. of his cousins and his best mm. friend. We we were their security uh, mm -hmm. when they went out because you got to realize that's what this is what really blows my mind, Chuck, is that when you see where this place is, there's no reason for anybody of our color persuasion to be hanging out over there. So the mother wasn't exactly too thrilled about going to this pocket of rednecks. So. That's yeah. where we came in. We're yeah. the security escort for her. We escorted her and the relatives and and the and matter of fact, their lawyer was out there with them also to the balloon balloon release. Okay, and and she was she 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 was she was very glad that we were there. She said very well protected. She just felt a little uneasy about all the guns. I can understand that because her son was shot, but you know, and we made sure that we you know try to keep that away from her. But at the same time prepare to secure some perimeter around her and so forth. But um, the two cousins that I did get a chance to talk to, the two young men that I did get a chance to talk to, uh, were very, very, very proud uh, that, some, that that Black men had come out, you know, on behalf of, of, of their cousin, you know, to, to stand the post, not just to walk around and sing, but that we was there for, to make sure that whatever happened, don't happen again. And if it do happen, it won't be happening to just us. So, yeah. uh, but but the mother, you know, like I say, um, all, all all my my blessings go out to her. She was there, and she was um, very reserved person. But I could tell that there was a seething anger uh, that you know, and she said it. 
I want them to get the death penalty for this because the story is coming out in layers. As we continue to peel back the layers, it gets worse and worse and worse. And I said it to you when I first went down there. We don't know the whole story. This don't make no sense. This yeah. doesn't. This doesn't match what we're being told. Right. The one thing, you know, when we first talked, it was. It seems like almost like a lifetime ago, and you really called a number of things. Um, like we said, most notably that he was essentially hunted and that he was on the run from the, uh, the uh, you know, the murderers. But the media has not portrayed it in this way. What is your, um, what do you feel about the actual media uh, and their role in all of this? Uh, well, as this is nothing new, Chuck, um, you know, I've been involved in quite a few high profile shootings before where what the media reports to America and what I see on the ground does not match. When you stop and, and this is why I won't talk to mainstream media, I've turned down every interview that they've asked is because it is not the media as I see you, a freelance you know, reporter out here trying to get the information, get the facts to the people. The corporate owned media uh, has a responsibility to its owners and to its owners, stockholders, to present a picture of America that makes them sleep good at night. So they it, so they leave out key pieces that may also empower us. I'll give you an example. A lot of folks were focusing on the fact that we came to Brunswick and that we were armed and so forth. But the media never talked about the fact that we did the same thing last year in Dayton. And mm. Folks are just seeing this video now where we marched into Dayton, confronted the KKK at the, uh, at the alt-right anniversary or whatever the hell it was and ran them out of date and we ran them out of date when they saw us that never made the news and that right. the images of black men marching in on the red green and black flag with all this gear on and then marching past the police and marching right up to the clan and saying what it is and they left that never got reported because those images remember propaganda empowers the mind and a misinformed public makes misinformed decisions i don't fault a lot of these white folks in America who are so in love with Donald's psychotic Trump mm -hmm. is because those are the folks who sit at home all day and are programmed mm -hmm. by Fox News. They're, they call it programming for a reason. They're mm -hmm. using neuro linguistics to put ideas into their heads so that these folks think that's really the way the world is. That's why those folks in Brunswick were so shocked and so afraid because they were Donald Trump supporters. Big old flags flying in the wind. I never seen a billboard of Donald Trump in front of nobody. How Donald Trump 2020, they, it said, the bullshit stops here. That's what it said. Now, come on, yo. Those people are so bought in. You couldn't tell them anything because in their world, this is right and we're wrong. Okay, yeah. the media controls that. So the media plays a big part in how the narrative is fed to America to make you either pay attention or make you mm -hmm. ignore it. And I'm the first one to say I went down there full of media story. But when I got there, nothing matched. So I stopped mm -hmm. listening to the media for the truth. I started watching the media for the lie. And yeah. they've been lying left and right. Matter of fact, they're still sitting around trying to figure out if this really boils down to you know, something more than he was just jogging. If this boils down to maybe he was seeing somebody over here and they found out about it. Or if this boils down to they kidnapped the bro and brought him over there and he got loose. If this boils down to something real ugly like that and then a whole little town to help cover it up, they got bigger problems. So the media has to be careful mm -hmm. how they report this because if they report it wrong and cause a race riot, or if they report it right and cause a race riot, <laughs> or if they call if they report it halfway. Either way, if we end up in a race riot, we live in a sue happy society. Everybody will sue you just for I'm suing you because I don't like the way he waved his hand at me. Nobody and, right. and there's and there is a law on the books right now, uh, in case your your viewers are not aware, called the Earn It Act. And the Earn It Act has some good and some bad news. The Earn It Act would abolish end-to-end -end encryption, meaning there'd be no more encrypted communications. They could see mm -hmm. everything, okay? That's why mm -hmm. nobody wants to pass it. But, right. the good, but the good part of it is that it would make social media companies liable if mm. someone gets slandered on their site. See, right now, you can say something about me on Instagram, and that's between me and you. Instagram yeah. ain't got nothing to do. Hey, 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 that's between y'all. 
That's called the law 730. But if that goes away, I can turn around and say, Instagram, I cannot believe that y'all let them get up here and say all that about me and destroy my name and put me in the court of social media and convicted me. So I'm suing y'all. So yeah. that law is in is actually being worked through the pipes right now because there are those who want to get rid of end to end encryption, but they the they, they, the big social media companies and the media is saying no 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 please don't pass that because they're gonna sue the hell out of us. Okay, right. so so at the end of the day, I don't trust the media because the media is now becoming what they call state media, like it was with some of the countries that I've set foot in, like of, of Iraq or or Afghanistan, where they control. There is no free yeah. press. It is controlled press. Our media has become controlled press. That's the problem. That's why most folks don't know the whole story. Even if they say we're going to move the case, people already got their minds made up. Yeah. Because of what the media has or has not reported. Has the media reported that an armed militia showed up legally in Brunswick for the purposes of just exercising our Second Amendment rights? No. I've seen everything from neo thugs showed up to terrorize the neighborhood to here's the best one Black Panthers on the loose. Like we just running around, you know, just <laughs> swinging through windows and just diving and just having a good old time. Uh, right. I saw one that said residents under siege. Like we outside, we know you're in there, come out. We throw that's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the media. And I tell people this all the time study Nazi Germany before the rise of Hitler. Right. It was a lot like America. And they had to figure out, we got to blame this on somebody. So they started calling the Jews thugs and lowlifes and not worthy and so forth. And they didn't fight back until it was too late because they had convinced everybody that they were not worth saving. And that's what they've done to the black man. That's what they've done to the black woman. That's what they're now doing to black children. They already ain't no thing. He, he already got pulled over in 2017. He ain't about nothing. He's a career criminal, really. Yeah. If everybody who ever got pulled over by a cop for a traffic ticket was to be labeled a career criminal, mm -mm, uh -huh. we're not playing that game. So no, I don't. The media, I don't give the media a pass at all because the media is not being the media right now. Yeah. One thing that I found that's difficult, just from all hip hop's perspective, being owned by two young black men is getting our people on board, getting our people to buy ads. Something simple as that. They ultimately always go to like an Instagram or a Facebook or whatever sure. to buy the ads. Uh, again, that's, that goes back to programming to some extent. Um, what, 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 what is your view on that from your point of view? You know, a lot of people are scared, but, uh, but uh, a, a lot of those folks are programmed too, as well. Well, you have to understand, you know, I am a, 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 a student of Dr. Claude Anderson. And Dr. Claude Anderson in his book, in his book, Poweronomics, talks about us practicing group economics within our own black community. But I have to speak to something. The reason that that has proven to be so difficult the reason why people say, well, why can't everybody just support everybody black? You have to understand that now we're going to take a, a trip back in time. You see, we didn't all come from the same place. We didn't all come from the same tribe. We didn't all come from the same countries in Africa. As a matter of fact, those of us that were indigenous here didn't even come from the same group that they brought here. And when you mix everybody up, there's a whole lot of inherited uh, rival tribals and so forth and misunderstandings mm. and so forth. We never, but whenever something happens, they want to treat black people as if we're this one monolithic um, of group and we're not. We're, we're, we're a hodgepodge of different folks in melanin casing. So we can never all see eye to eye. The problem with that is because of that, we fail to practice group economics. Our dollars only bounce one time, if that, before we give it to somebody else. Whereas in other demographics, their dollars bounce eight, nine, 10, 12, 13 times before they give it to a black person. Okay, so the, the problem with us trying to practice group economics is the main reason why we feel more comfortable giving our money to the white man or to the red man or to the yellow man before we give it to the black man. Now, when I see people like what you're talking about right now, um, trying to get people on board, sometimes you have to remember, Chuck, people don't change because you ask them. People change because things become uncomfortable. And they have to change. In this particular instance, everybody just thought that, you know what? Yeah, it's bad enough. We got the virus and we under quarantine. I don't lost my damn job. I ain't got my football team no more. Life has changed. We got to wear masks. We already under a lot of pressure. So, you know, how much worse can it get? Well, soon as they released everybody from under the quarantine, we saw how bad it got. People acting like we back in Jim Crow and so forth and so on. Now, that right there 
is a catalyst for people to say we got to do something different. It's already bad enough as it is. We got more people out of work right now than they had in the Great Depression. It's bad out here right now. Some of us didn't get a stimulus check because they said we made too much. I didn't see no stimulus check. Chuck, did you get a stimulus check? So that don't mean none to us. But to some folks, that's all they had. The last thing we need is for you all to start treating us like y'all got it made and we back on the slave plantation. That's a catalyst for change. Chuck, I've turned down $2.1 million in donations thus far. So people will put their money where their mouth is when it's beneficial for their continued survivability in the face of change. We didn't say this is a movement. We change the game. We bring in another element to the game. So the game just changed. So the next time somebody say, well, we're going to protest and you see them just picking up signs, somebody should say, that's it. I thought we changed the game. You understand what I'm saying? So so that being said, it's the change that's pulling people forward. It's the I'm tired of watching this go on and we just wait for the next episode. A lot of folks have become apathetic to contributing or supporting any of these so-called causes that I don't rock with. And I said it before and I'm going to say it again. I see a lot of people trying to attach themselves to this who've already been in existence, who've done absolutely nothing. You do what you do over there. Let us do what we're doing over here. Maybe we'll meet in the middle, but we are not on the same playing field. Okay? Yeah. We are not We are not colleagues. You are, we are not by blood related. This ain't just because I'm black, you black, you in. Nope. We stopping that at the door. Maya Angelou said it best. Everybody in my skin is not my kin. And everybody that look like me is not my friend. And a lot of y'all is still house niggas. And a lot of y'all feel with self-hatred. And a lot of y'all are still socialized because you have not shaken off the roots of post-traumatic slave disorder from slavery. So you take it out on your own people. So don't think just because you rock with that group or that group or any of these other groups that suddenly we're going to embrace you. No, we're going to reject you for the simple fact that we look at you as part of the problem and not part of the solution. We're not trying to take everybody. We're just trying to take our people. Because for some, for once, Chuck, somebody has got to care about just black people. I'm not saying the rest of y'all. Some, can I just focus on black people for a minute? Can I just love on black people for a minute? I mean, I know everybody worry about the other folks. That's y'all problem. Every time we try to focus on us, here the rest of y'all come. And before you know it, everybody them bandwagon. They, instead of it being for black people, it's for black people and people of color. Now it's for black people and handicapped and humpbacks and midgets. It's for everybody. <laughs> can we have something... This problem that we have in America right now is our problem. Yeah. And before anybody jumps on here and says, I watched the whole interview, Chuck, but he ain't talk about black on black. Why aren't they in the neighborhoods knocking down black on black? That is part of our program to address internal crimes in our neighborhoods, establish our own security, security patrols, make sure that people are OK and so forth. We're going to deal with all of that, but that doesn't excuse what else has happened externally to us. We already know, Chuck, and I've told you this, that they did an examination and found out that the four reasons, that the four main reasons that we kill each other in our community are rooted in slavery. We've never had a chance to heal as a people. The aggressor, the oppressor is still in our face every day, like an abusive relationship. So we can never heal. And on top of that, they're still in our ear. They're in our kids' ear. They're in our family ear. So no, we ain't got no breathing space. So don't talk to me about black on black. What y'all did to that boy down there ain't got nothing to do with black on black. They got to do with old school racist attitudes that you still don't want to admit that we live in a world where we are human beings, too. And there will be repercussions paid. Mm. What about working with others? You, know, you, you alluded to it just now. But what about working with? Uh, well, I don't want to name anybody, but <laughs> I, I, I saw, I saw I, I'll, I'll say this, you know, the NAACP was name checked by Aubrey's lawyer. Uh, as a supportive entity, but um, do you feel, I guess is the question, that uh, other elements will be necessary for, for just legal elements, for example, um, a, a, a team of lawyers or politicians in the local area? I, I saw a politician, for example, actually get escorted by armed um, right. black men right. recently. So, so let me let me let me answer. That's a great question. As far as as I said earlier, as far as working along with other entities, we're fine with that. Whatever your mission is, you continue to drive on. Just realize that we are a group of folks who know your history. Mm. We're not accepting you on face value. We right. we, want, we know where you came from. And just like Malcolm said, I have a problem with any organization that's supposed to be for my people, but you got a white person at the head of it. 
No, 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 no. Like Malcolm said, you can help us, but you can't join us. No, you won't sit at the head. You're not my spokesperson. You're not my mouthpiece. I don't need you to try to make my people feel good. I need you to step the hell off. You want to support, you support monetarily. You want to support, you talk to your people for us. Okay, you turn around and go, don't, I don't need you talking to my people no more. No, I don't want to work with you. No more. We have trust and believe. The folks that are involved in this come from all walks of life. We got doctors, lawyers, architects, scientists, the whole nine yards. We got enough smart folks to figure this thing out. So if we need to work along with you, as long as your goals and objectives don't conflict with ours, then we can work together. That's what a coalition does. But if what you're trying to do is maintain the status quo. If what uh -huh. you're doing is telling us don't act, let's just go with somebody else's law. No, 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 no. We done with that. Yeah. All we've done is work with everybody else. All we've done is abide by everybody else's laws. All we've done is giving the system a chance. All we've done. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is, how about y'all try to work with us? Yeah. It's not about us coming to work with y'all. We wouldn't even exist if y'all was doing y'all job. Right. But that's water under the bridge because now we do exist. Right, so right. if you think that you can continue to use, quote unquote, the clergy to pacify us, mm -hmm. that won't work. If you think that you can have to confuse us with legalese because of lawyers, that won't work. If you think that you can come and misinterpret and selectively choose which parts of the Constitution you want to enforce against us, that won't work. Because laws only work as long as the people obey them. Mm, right. Facts. What about white people, man? Uh, one of the biggest... For me, at least, you know, people see me doing interviews like this or or whatever or speaking out myself or, or whatever. And and they automatically think you hate white people. Uh, what, what's Chuck, your stance on that? Chuck, Chuck, that's a that's a very loaded question. And it's one that I am going to <laughs> turn fire in this fashion. You don't hate people if you love your own. You don't hate people uh, who have you've never met uh, because they've never done anything to you. You can hate what a people has done to your people. Mm -hmm. You can hate the fact that people have an attitude that you shouldn't have an attitude about the stuff they've done to your people. Mm -hmm. uh, you can hate the fact that th you can hate the stance that certain people adopt when they're confronted with the facts about what they've done to another person uh, but to actually hate an entire group of people who i don't know uh who's who, who it's obviously don't know me but who are the representatives and the beneficiaries of actions that have transgressed against my people then i hate what you have done i hate what your ancestors have done i hate the state of affairs that we're in right now but most importantly i hate all of you who won't do a damn thing to change it and if the shoe fits you wear it uh, uh, uh. Now I saw briefly on on Instagram. It's you, you're about to leave Instagram. Are you serious about that? Uh, here's what's happening. Uh, we have, and I'm, I'm speaking again from an intelligence factor. Let's look at history. When the Black Panthers decided they wanted to help their neighborhoods, including defend their own citizens uh, from police brutality, uh, the powers to be began to change the laws since the birth of the NRA and all that good stuff and black folks for guns. But most importantly, J. Edgar Hoover thought it was his responsibility to make sure that black folks never got themselves together. So they started a program of COINTELPRO and of course another program called Operation Black Messiah to prevent the rise of anyone that could galvanize the black nationalist movement and cause black folks to get themselves together. Those, those methodologies haven't changed those programs are still active. So we have to be twice as diligent, if not quadruply as diligent to prevent anyone from infiltrating our organization with the, with the, uh, the understanding that this is a one-way trip. If you come in here and we find out you're a traitor, we're gonna kill you. I say this, but the stuff I'm saying to you is not something I wouldn't say to anybody else. That's how we keep people out of it. Don't come in here with those games. We have nothing to lose at this point. If you are sending an infiltrator, if you're sending a spy, you won't get him back. That's why we vet you so hard. But as far as, as infiltration, which has been the art form of how they can never attack us from the outside. It's always one of our people on the inside. It always brings us down. We know that those things are at work. So when all of these folks said they wanted to join the NFAC after they saw what happened in Brunswick, when all these folks say, I got this, I got that, I'm down, I'm down, you, you, you have to take me to be a fool. 
to believe that I believe that every last one of them is who they say they are and that their intentions are, are clean and pure and in alignment with ours. So the first thing that you have to remember is you never build your house on another man's land. OK, since all of this has happened and this was already happening just a little bit, but it's really been turned up and you saw it happen when we talked, uh, they will begin to interfere with your broadcast. Uh, they can pull the plug if you say key words. They have artificial intelligence algorithms now that key off on certain words. Uh, folks will be kicked out of your your communications or they will never get the notifications altogether. You're at the mercy of someone else now. The beautiful part about that is, well, folks say, well, we got to go somewhere where we can talk. And I have explained it to them. In order to do that, you have to not only own the platform, you have to own the underlying infrastructure. You have to have complete control of that infrastructure. You have to have some type of identity access management protocol call in place to check who comes into that infrastructure and for what purpose where did they go what did they do who did they talk to you have to have all of that in place cost a little bit of money but if you have the right architectural experience like i do and you know how to write the infrastructure as a code like i do if you have the ability to build it you build it and take your people there and i'm talking about everything from what we're doing right now video conferencing the ability to have forums where no one can edit what you have to say and a secure place where we can meet to discuss our business that you have to be authenticated into several layers so that if something goes wrong we know everybody who was there and we got a good idea who did it right. so i have announced that i'm leaving social media uh, that the in fact will leave social media and that we will go into our own infrastructure and that we will then come out of that infrastructure and the folks will see what our actions are it is too public it is too i mean come on let's be honest instagram Twitter, Facebook, that's their platform. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'll share this with you. I left Facebook uh, because I was censored so heavily. I had one, I did one post, uh, Chuck, and it had a million views on it. And it was on some pro-black stuff. And I got an email saying, you probably don't know our policy. So we took that down for you and, you know, have a great day. Yeah. Really? Wow. Thank you. Same thing when I went over to YouTube. I put up a couple of views. I had put some stuff up on YouTube, facts over feelings. Got a nice little email. You know, this is just a warning. You know, see, I, that censorship, that's not in the Constitution. Yeah. First Amendment says I can say what I want to say. Matter of fact, I fought for this country because so y'all can say what you want to say. Now I'm not going to come back here and you're going to tell me I can't say nothing. Then I'll build my own house and say what I want to say in it. And everybody who want to go, come on over here. All the rest of y'all who are too socially damaged or too or socially handicapped that want to stay on these people's platforms, so they can treat you like, then you stay there. Mm hmm. How did you get the name Grandmaster J? That's a long story. I know that had nothing to do with what we're talking about right now, but I'll go ahead and tell you what happened. <laughs> people, nobody, you're the first person in seven years. Uh, as a matter of fact, we talked earlier about people being tried and convicted in the court of social media. If you look at the history, I was the first one to be roasted and toasted worldwide mm -hmm. on instant on social media because of a bad business deal I did back in 2013 with this company called Beams. And they did it. They really leaked this BS commercial. I got blamed for everything from the rooter to the tutor. And they they, they roasted me. They tried to say that I never existed, and they tried to say I was fake, and this, that, and the third. Oh, they just rolled me out, Chuck. I just and yeah. me, I just sat back and said, "Ain't nobody come ask me nothing. Ain't right. nobody try to interview me. Ain't nobody pick up the phone." Right. It was social media on steroids, and right. so now that people have seen otherwise in the last seven years, you've seen me in these environments with the very people that you claim I didn't know. <laughs> you've seen me with some of the very people that I was not supposed to have affiliations with. The point of the matter is I actually started off back in 1978 as MC Master J. I was the rapper mm -hmm. and uh, I was the rapper. And uh, it was not, not until 1982 that I decided to get into DJing because I couldn't find a DJ back then that could do what we wanted to do. So I had to learn how to DJ. And then, of course, they had a radio station called uh, WQKS, uh, KISS 96 FM. They had what was called the Master Mix competition. And people don't understand, it's not like the day where y'all DJs go out and you set up turntables and you get three minutes. That's not how we did it back then. We didn't have all these training wheels and toys y'all got now. You had to make a tape. You send the tape into the radio station. And they, you know, they put you on, they contest number one, they play your tape. They contest number two, they play the tape, and they tell the people to call in and vote. Which one did you like? It was a cassette. So you, depending on what you knew how to do, you could really make some nice stuff and win. So I won the KISS 96 Master Mix Championship two years in a row. Um, I remember in 84 when they had the um, 
uh, the, the Electric Fresh Fest came down to the Richmond Coliseum, and they had everybody who was in hip hop was on the Fresh Fest. I got yeah. a chance. I got. A, I got a chance to meet everybody, and and I'll never forget it. It was then that one of the guys they called me the King of Scratch. That's what they called me at first. But I didn't want to be the King of Scratch. You know what I'm saying? I'm Master J, and they were like, No, 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 no you can't be Master J. And somebody said, well, he's Grandmaster J, and that name stuck. It okay. stuck. Right when that happened. Run DMC came out with Jam Master J. And right. from that moment on, people got the two confused. And I used to have to shut the hell up because I love Run DMC and they blew up. And I'd be in the corner like, but I'm Master J. And I wouldn't say shit because I, you know, I really love these cats. You know what I'm saying? It was hip hop was growing back then. It wasn't big yeah. business. You, you know this. The same way uh, Jazzy Jeff from Fred, from Funky Four mm -hmm. Plus One More. Then you got Jazzy yeah. Jeff from the Fresh Prince. Most people don't yeah. know that. You got Cash Money, DJ Cash Money, but most people just know Cash Money on Universal. See, when we grew up, names were not something that were given to you. You made up a name based on what you did. They called him Grandmaster Flash because he was fast. They called him Funk Master Flex because he had the funkiest beats. They called him, they call him Wiz Kid, G-L-O-B-E, because he was, y'all don't realize we, those was our nicknames. Yeah. There wasn't DJ names. There wasn't rap names. But I watched this thing grow over the last 30, 40 years to become the industry that it is. And now people care about those type of things. And a lot of people are fans. They are. Um, I, I, um, I st and it's funny because I'm so caught up in what I'm doing to save my people now that a lot of people are saying, well, you know, we don't see you doing stuff. Every now and then I put some out. You know what I'm saying? Let y'all know. You know, I, 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 I'm the old rich guy with all the toys now. You get what right. I'm saying? Like it's yeah. funny because it's funny because I own every piece of equipment that's out. I just don't have the time yeah. to play with it. And I'm the guy that I used to always want to meet when I was a kid. You let me find some old oh, got all this shit. I'm gonna act up. But right. when you're young, you don't understand that this is thousands and thousands of dollars of yeah. equipment and on top of that music. So the whole grandmaster thing came out of I come from the era. Remember when you like today y'all got little pump. And love this yeah. and love that and look okay. Oh y'all, you know what I'm saying? Back then it was grandmaster this and grandmaster yeah. that. Remember everything was a, everybody was scratch master this and rock master yeah. this and it was master right. master. So you could yeah. that was our see y'all don't realize you looking at the first generation. It's not that we were saying we was the best. That was our name. You right. get what I'm saying? For the for yeah. the for the Kiss 96 Master Mix, I battled a dude named Scratch Master Magic. Right. I never even heard of this cat, but he was the guy that made it, and I'm Grandmaster. And you had all these grand, you had Grandmaster, uh, Grandmasters. Um, what's his name? I can't remember the guy's name. That made um the electric, the um, electric slide. Grandmaster Sl oh. uh, Slice, and he, he's not right. a DJ. Remember he did he did a joint called Electric yeah. Slide. Everybody eating this shit up, right? You had Grandmaster Flash. You had Grandmaster D. You had Grandmaster Flower. You had Grandmaster Nisi Lee. It was that was the name <laughs> for that era. So you know if your yeah. name was Grandmaster, we knew you was seventies, eighties, somewhere around right. that time. Right. If you came out with some name like a uh, 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 G unit or you know what I'm saying, Easy E, you know, Death right. Squad, that's the '90s. But when they start yeah. becoming Ludis and Pump That, and you know what I'm saying, yeah, that's this new group. Yeah. Twenty years from now, ain't nobody gonna ask a little Uzi. So, would you a small bro? Why they call you Lud? Right. You know, how'd you get the name Lud? That was the name at the time. Yeah. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Just like when yeah. Lil Jeezy came out. We went from Lil Jeezy to Lil Yeezy to Lil Peasy. Everybody right. was some Lil. You get what I'm saying? That yeah. was, that's, that was, and, but as time has grown, yeah. and as we have grown and, and hip hop has matured, you know, and that's why I have to send a big shout out to my man, Chief Rocker Busy B, because last year we formed the Hip Hop Umbrella which was an organization that was going to work along with the Hip Hop Museum uh, in mm -hmm. New York and also with Dave Mays from The Source and the Pop-Up Hip Hop Museum to begin mm -hmm. to capture real hip hop history, even folks that never made it on a record, folks that, that are legendary just because of what they did for street cred, make sure they're included in the museum and mm -hmm. to give these older guys a stage once again, because they're still walking around. They're still living history. Big shout out to Grandmaster Cass. Big shout out to my man, Lil Roddy C from the Funky Four. These are all of the cats that I don't rock with in the last year. Of course, my man, uh, Jazzy J, legendary DJ Jazzy J, uh, T La Rock. You know, I, I can yeah. let's keep going. Van Silk, the whole nine yeah. years. I can go to my man, Mick Benzo, Ice-T, everybody. Benzo. Yeah, Benzo's my man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Benzo's a good dude, man. You know, I love yeah. Benzo. But Benzo, you got to know how to take Benzo. Everybody right. know Mick <laughs> Benzo. You know what I'm saying? All of, all the cats in Naughty by Nature, Trash, the whole nine yards. All of these cats, hip-hop umbrella. Hip-hop umbrella. You know, LL got the XL station now. You know, he's doing his part. You know, B got the, the, the sticky green thing he's doing. We all doing something different. Matter of fact, um, before the, the virus hit, we were just talking about the Art of Rap Tour. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and where we going to go and what we going to do. And, you know, if y'all don't know, last, and I know this is off topic what we're talking about, last year I went into the Bronx because uh, I wanted to take it back to the beginning. That was the Back to the Bronx block party. And it wasn't just a block party. We went in there with a full stage set up. We fed the community. We gave away book bags. I mean, the whole night, even the police came out and was like, this is really nice. Y'all got any Sugar Hill? That's what the police chief said. Yeah, I got some Sugar Hill for you, dog. You get what I'm saying? We, yeah. we went out and embraced the streets again. Yeah. And, and so that's 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 the part of being the grandmaster now is that it's not so much, you know, do you get on turntables and do this, that, and the third. No, be a real grandmaster. Yeah. Give yeah. back to your community. Uh -huh. Be the uh -huh. be the grandfather in hip hop. And let these young boys know that there's more to it than just picking up a microphone or getting behind a turntable. If that's all you think hip hop is, I'm gonna tell you to your face, you're a coward. And you'll mm. run up on me, but you won't run up on them boys in Brunswick, will you? Mm. I think that's a perfect way to, to end this conversation, man. I just got to say thank you for your time. And uh, we we will have to, uh, you know, stay in touch. Uh, you know, when you get off social media or whatever, we'll still talk. I'm going to, uh, I'll give you a heads up. We about to do something real big, Chuck. That's all I'm okay. going to tell you. We, we got another shoe that's going to drop. <laughs> and okay. I'm pretty sure you and I are going to probably talk again after that one. Okay. Um, feel free to let me know. But yes, please stay in touch. Um, a lot of folks are curious as to where we're going to go with this. Are we now going to start seeing armed black folks showing up every time that there is an, in, an injustice against black folks? Yes. Will we start to see uh, these immediately? Well, that depends on the people. Um, anybody who wants to join, uh, you can come Currently, you can come to my Instagram at the official Grandmaster J and drop me your email. You will be vetted. You have to allow us to look at your, your platform. We need to know who you are. OK, and if you have anything that precludes you from owning a firearm, let us know up front. We, maybe we can help you get your, your, your gun rights back. We did eight people this weekend alone getting their rights restored so they can own a weapon. We're not just saying we're going out in the street to shoot people. We are an organized structure that will benefit our community and protect it at the mm -hmm. same time. Chuck, I want to thank you for having me. Once again, all hip hop, y'all, thank you for having me. And once again, I hope we can keep the dialogue going because as far as I'm concerned, hip hop uh, is the voice of the streets. And so the, the streets need to hear what we're talking about right here. God bless you, my man. Appreciate you.